guys welcome back to my channel my name is Dizet Zou and you're tuned into a safe space where we have hard conversations on life love and all things healing now if you're tuning in for the first time where you been at where you been at and why you not subscribed <laughs> um click the subscribe button join the family there's enough room for everybody in this place there's enough room for us to learn together um yeah and if you've been watching and not subscribing that's rude it's very rude okay <laughs> anyway welcome to my channel guys once again um so today i am back trying to look very cozy but this position <laughs> that i'm in is really uncomfortable um but i'm here to answer all the questions that i got from my previous video if you have not watched i did give a live update and one of the updates that i i gave was on my marital status and i'm going to be ask, answering questions that i've got on instagram and um yeah on my dms and in a q and a thing that i put up on my stories um yeah that's what we're going to be doing today i tried like i looked over the the messages i i looked over the um, the questions and i tried to be on some yeah maybe let me just not prepare for them let me just um, answer them as I I see them like on the video. But then I also just decided I'm not going to over prepare so that I don't like sound philosophical or whatever. But I I want to I want to be as genuine as possible when I answer the questions. So what I had done is I went through all of them and I asked those questions to me <laughs> and not answer them for YouTube. I, ans I answered them um um for myself as well because some of the questions literally got me thinking a little um you know also speaking from a place where i'm not bleeding the way that i'm i was before i think um on some questions i had to like step back a little and think about it um so yeah i'm gonna be looking to my left which is your right just because my laptop is there and that's where the questions are and yeah, let me not waste your time before I even go, go any further. So I, this is the drink, right? I stopped drinking this original drink, right? When I was pregnant with my first child, um, I had this terrible nausea and everything that I ate back then in my first trimester, I don't like now. Like I will, you know, but I've gone back to drinking this and I think because they have, they added like lemon lime and whatnot and there's this cucumber one that they have and it's more palatable yeah i don't know why i'm telling you that but um yeah if you say you like something you might change your mind and you might change your mind to like it again it's life you're allowed to change your mind quote unquote anyway let's start so i i had i have a lot of questions ranging from how i view my my life lately how people around me view it and it was quite interesting and there were some questions that i think i i need to like answer in a sit down like literally dedicate the sit down to that one answer and i will do that i think i will do that so yeah let's get into the questions before we get there there is a shout out i want to make i want to make a shout out to leanne so when i put up when i put up uh this status or rather the q a on on youtube she she then sent me this cute message that i'm going to share and uh, because it made me blush she said uh this is not a question but a reminder there's a young girl who really loves you and has a heart for the ministry of healing and helping others and looks up to you and prays that god covers you oh guys that was like the sweetest message ever i almost cried there yeah i love her like i love leanne i only met her like once so her once she sings and i'm always bothering her in 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 her dms and i'm still waiting for her to post her youtube channel but i'm gonna link her stuff because i want you guys to bother her to on instagram ask her when are you gonna post a video on your youtube channel anyway done with leanne love you babe love you lots so the first question that i got was they're all over the place so i'm gonna try like uh organize it i am unorganized right now but the lord is your strength you are watching this because you, you love me 
Um, so the question that I asked that I got was what made you decide to actually get the divorce? I had a similar question um, or suggestion of what to talk about in my in the comment section and somebody wanted to know uh, the journey between me um, saying yes to my husband and eventually coming to where I am right now. So I think that's one of the questions that I'm going to answer like in my next video. I'm definitely answering that, that question in my next video because I want to take you guys on a journey, right? But um, to answer this one shortly, I will go into details um in the in the next video which will definitely be a story time this is uncomfortable um what made me decide to actually get the divorce so to be honest <laughs> to be honest i i i almost answered this in the most like you know inspiring way but to be honest it was not my idea in the first place um it wasn't it did not come from me you know uh, my ex-husband wanted a divorce and um i think for it wasn't the first time he asked for one and for the longest of times i had denied him the the liberty i think you know and i'll get into the details of that later as we speak um and i think this time when when things happened and he said he wanted a divorce um his actions pushed me into a place where i had to question whether i valued myself and how much do i think i value myself and yeah self-worth kicked in at some point and i was like yeah this is it I, I i can't i can't stay in a place where i don't feel valued and i mean a lot had happened you know for me to actually get to that point just to paint a picture we had you know in black families where when two couples when the couples don't want to be uh with each other anymore they call families and whatever there was a, a meeting that was held i remember when i was driving to the meeting i told god and i'm like this meeting will determine whether i am sticking this one out or i'm leaving and as it like um unfolded to the meeting yeah that's when literally i think at some point when i was sitting in that meeting my mind was like what are you doing here you are like you you are not wanted here um and that's when my heart was my heart broke my heart broke but my mind was like you can do better than you know you can do better than um trying to seek your worth in places where you are clearly um not valued yeah if i can put it that way i'm trying to like <laughs> i'm trying to like hold back on a lot of things but that's literally what was going on in my mind then and i remember i went home um when i went into my bedroom and i cried i cried I remember I closed the door and I I scream. <laughs> I screamed at the top of my lungs and I was telling God I'm like Lord it hurts. It hurts but I can't let go. The more I hold on, the more painful it is. Um and it was after that night. I think it was after that night that actually it was not at night. It was in the morning. After the meeting I slept in the morning. I went into the room. I was supposed to go pray. And I couldn't. I cried. And I said, Lord, I have to trust you with my heart because I can feel it breaking. It hurts so much. It hurts so much. And I can't take it. And I remember when I said, Amen, I was like, now take me through the journey of letting go. And I mean, this is what this was just at the end. I remember like two months before that. I was sitting in the room and I I was singing the song I'm no longer a slave to fear because divorce was my biggest fear. Uh, I tried to dodge it, but it was my fear. And I think that's when I started, you know, playing around with the idea of leaving, you know, of me being a divorcee. And I'm like, but I can't be enslaved by fear, you know and yeah that's one of my favorite songs just by the way you unravel me anyway 
with a melody it's beautiful yeah so next question this is the q a this is not a story time so we'll get into the other details when i um as we go on right um <clears throat> like that question but yeah next video is definitely going to be on, on more details about this um and the next question was how do you deal with fellow christians judging you for getting a divorce um i tried like i probably i probably don't um relate can't relate with a lot of people when it comes to this because i don't think that i struggled as much with judgment um i think the judgment was more towards myself or the guilt or the shame was more towards myself than to others um well rather to what others would think of my situation and i think because god had given me such solid ground to stand on um i i didn't really care i didn't really care what other people thought i didn't care what other people were thinking um i don't think i did you know uh, i think the most people that i cared largely about was my family how were they gonna take it um a lot of people didn't know what was going on you know now it's like yeah for me it was more the fear of my family knowing and how their response will be the rest of the people man i don't know that i think the the only interaction that was unpleasant um with the church was not knowing where i fit in and i really felt out of place i really felt like there is no place for divorced people in the church um i really felt like there is no and I mean, this is not all churches, right? Um, this is not all churches. But I just felt like there's this thing lacking, you know. Um, there's no support, if I can put it like that, for people who are in transition and who don't know themselves in that manner anymore, you know. Yeah, so I think my challenge was that it was not necessarily what other people say. And I know that people are talking and have been talking, but child i've dealt with so much uh pain and i've healed so much from what other people will say uh um about my my own brokenness that it doesn't it doesn't bother me um anymore and i had to do a lot of work to get there so yeah that's my answer to that and then the, uh, the next question that i got i'm trying to like answer them accordingly uh, someone said do you think we should should be worried about uh, do you think we should be worried also as the church about divorce very i think you need to be worried <laughs> you need to be worried that um the kind of teachings the kind of um sermons that are being taught in the church are sermons that are not touching the in between they are in the two extremes that you forget about the people in the middle i think we need to be afraid because we are not teaching the young boy how to be you know loving we are not teaching the young girl how to stand firm in their worth we are not teaching the both of them how to coexist and how to how to you know um how, what can i say how to embrace each other's differences as male and female you know and how god wants us to express ourselves fully as male and female to become one you don't have to decrease yourself for the other one to become superior or anything you don't have to decrease any of these two these two need to be living fully in the in the in the traits and characteristics that have been given to them by god the minute you expect the other one to lower themselves than the other then they are not fulfilling the the their rightful mandate if i can put it like that so i think there's a lot of teachings that need to go into divorce um and i mean to church is about divorce about marriage about you know singlehood that people are just scraping the surface 
you know we understand that yes let's pray we understand the person must be prayerful sorry we understand that people must be prayerful we understand that the people have must have some kind of relation not some kind they need to have a relationship with god but there are things like character like you know that that people need need still need grooming in you know i mean there's a lot i could say a lot about this question but i think the worry is not that god can't do it the worry is that we are obliv oblivious to what is actually happening i said once in my youtube uh, on my instagram that um sometimes we forget that you know when the bible speaks about you know god div uh, hates divorce and the bible stands that it's it's that you know god hates divorce um uh and that's scriptural it's true we stick to that that we don't take the people who are in between who are actually experiencing the hardships in marriage we don't take them in we don't pull them in we don't we don't have sermons that are speaking to them we are we having sermons that are actually condemning them they're making making them feel like oh if their marriage is if is, is rocky then they made the wrong decisions then it's their fault so you 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 just perpetuate the sense of guilt and shame that most people that are going through such things can't even come up and speak about it even if the people are not divorcing but say for instance they are going through a hard time in their marriage they can't come to you because you are such an extremist in your in your ways that you've built a wall that people can't come to you because we know you're perfect and your streaks are like perfect and if i'm gonna come there with my imperfect um, um marriage and tell you my problems i'm gonna feel like i don't relate to you so we need more more people in the church who are going to um sit with the people who are struggling in the in between and let them in and pull them closer to the truth you know this extreme truth to pull them tr closer to that and let them in on what god's heart is for them um i mean very passionate about the whole extremes and in between things so i could go on forever um yeah so Someone asked me, what were the red flags now that you look back? Shoot. Wow. It's a good question. It's a very good question because um, when in the, in the beginning, when I was going through the, 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 like the separation and whatnot, all I saw is red flags. All I saw is red flags and all that did to me was put me in a guilt box that man you were such a prayerful woman you were such a pray a, a, a discerning woman how did you miss that you know um and i yo shim i guilted i, I guilt tripped myself for a while for a while but we thank god for grace because he pulled me back and allowed me to see things um differently but um I'm glad I'm us. I'm being asked this question now that I've 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 kind of looked through the entire situation and and seen what was and what is. What were the red flags? Um, the one, the three red flags that I'm gonna mention three. They were, <laughs> they're a lord, they're a lord. And I know sometimes when we answer this, we think the red flags are from the other person only, but even from from ourselves, right? But the first red flag. For me was that when i met my ex-husband i was going through grief i had just lost my okay it was not when we met but when i gave him a chance was when um my dad passed away i was grieving and he on the other side uh, other hand was also going through family stuff i'm not going to talk about that because this is not his channel it's my channel so he was also going through his stuff and um already that's a bad combination i mean we were comforting each other we were we were like there for each other it's cute when you think about it but when you but when you in hindsight when you think about it it's like oh shame they like distressed people found love no but it's it hindered a whole lot of um um my iq uh no 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 it hindered a lot of my eq um in that a lot of things a lot of decisions were made out of emotion and a lot of decisions were made out of um trying to fill a void yeah that was the biggest red flag and i i could i could safely say right now that i myself was i was not in a position to be in a relationship let alone 
consider marrying anyone in that in in that instance red flag number two which on his side and i mean there were many instances where i saw this but i was just like what's that you know i can handle that i think it's it's so little but when i think about it now i'm just like hmm when um it was like his temper or rather like yeah in kind of road rage yeah road rage Ooh, i used to be like wait a minute what is dead you know and i never thought that you know it's it's any it's not it's a big deal i just thought you know how we make this function um um okay like you see it and you're like no but it's not supposed to be like that but it is like that so you're just like but a lot of people do it and a lot of people will tell you it's like a cheating man like um oh your husband is cheating all men cheat so then you normalize dysfunction because all men cheat so because people have road rage you overlook it and you be like he's also one of them and you could talk about it casually be like oh my husband has road rage uh, uh no no that's a red flag why can't you control your emotions but anyway so that's the second one and the third one and i speak about how you need to make sure that the person that you you are you are getting into a relationship with knows god and um and i mean knows and has a relationship with god i remember one one day we were in a car and we were driving and i don't remember what i asked him i asked him about something in the scriptures or something and he didn't answer me he said to me his answer was kind of what did he say he said i think i'm better than him i think i know it all and i was like but i just asked a simple question i was just making conversation because i wanted to find out what you think about one two three and i think about it now and i'm just like hmm yeah so to those three the other the red flag for me is that i was i was excessively emotional i was excessively emotional and i think because and i i thought of it like quite a number of times and i'm like i i'm recovering now obviously from people pleasing but then i didn't know it was people pleasing i always wanted to please him i always wanted to do the right thing in his eyes um but i also realized that people pleasing is very manipulative because in as much as you do things so that people like you in the back of your mind you want something in return you have an expectation you know of how the person needs to respond to your pleasing you know so yeah that's a huge red flag a huge personality personality um dip that yeah i went into therapy and i did a lot of research and I did a lot of reading and it's people pleasing people pleasing is manipulative um yeah no you can manipulate people by being people a people pleaser because you you really at the back of your mind you really hope the person will kind of reciprocate what you're giving to them um yo i could name I could name a lot maybe we should have a video about this and i want to do red flags for uh both sides for me what i thought obviously because i mean yeah next question is um do you want to get married again so i don't know if i should answer this question according to you know the christian standards and say if the lord wills i will get married again <laughs> Or should I answer it um, truthfully? Um, I need to think about that a little. The answer is an obvious yes, because I'm a sucker for love. I think the, the question that would be difficult would be, um, do I want to get married? I don't know what the answer, the difficult question would be, but I do want to get married again. I do. And I, I, I tell God that, I don't think I'm the I'm the single type. I don't think so. I, <laughs> I'm not searching, but I don't think I'm the single type. Besides, like some of us are in ministry, and you know, ministry is tough. It's tough. You need you need a super. Talk about that one other time. Um, mom, I'm not seeing anyone. Anyway, uh, next question is, hi, babe. So, yes, someone said, hi, babe. Do the kids understand how did you take them through the process of grieving the family 
and set up venue yo this is a sensitive one this is a very sensitive one mm. my kids have seen a lot they've experienced a lot in my marriage um i don't think i have a six year old and a two year old if you didn't know um gorgeous gorgeous babies trust me um but i don't think my two-year-old fully understands um i think he's just adapting to um whatever we're giving him right now wherever he is um he just adapts you know and but i can see that he he longs for um for for us he longs for his dad sometimes he longs for me you know um i can see all of that and i think uh, i'm not a psychologist but i can see that it affected him um in as much as he won't understand what's going on the six year old however yeah yeah i'm gonna cry and i don't want to cry yeah so for my six year old i think I don't think she gets it i don't think she gets it i tried i tried i tried to talk to her you know and just euphemize the situation and you know she, she i don't think she gets it this one time i we were bathing i was bathing him getting getting ready her i mean and getting her ready for school and she says to me mommy why did you break our family I looked at her i stopped everything and i looked at her and i'm like what do you mean because i wanted to get where her mind you know was at and i wanted to get um i wanted to get her reasoning and she says to me yeah because um she mentions how because we don't stay in the same place daddy is over there and we're over here and whatnot right and yeah that that was hard i didn't know how to answer it and i'm just like i just told her that um i just told her the truth what i thought would be like still keep us both safe and then he she says to me it's okay mommy i'm going to speak to to daddy because how are we going to be a family without a dad oh god so no I don't know. I don't have the the ability to take her through it um, without breaking down. Because also, I'm not trying. I'm trying to keep her at a place. Because my my child feels like she can protect me. <laughs> she she feels like she's my little protector. But um, yeah, I'm gonna leave that to. She's gonna start um, therapy next year. I'm gonna leave that to the guidance of a trained uh, professional and yeah we'll go through that properly next year and i think in this year it was su such a shock for me but i think my biggest stress with everybody that i've been talking to my biggest stress about my kids was that in as much as i am dealing and i am trying to you know um come to terms with what's going on and embracing the new identity they too are, are struggling and i think my biggest struggle was trying to juggle the two and my mom has been such a great blessing in this that he she told me that this year she just wants me to take care of myself and find my feet and then next year i can worry about you know um not worry but i'll be in a better place to be able to to be able to journey with my kids properly so that's like i don't even know if i answer it properly but you have a grieving of the family unit that they knew or she knew is very it's yeah i can see that it takes strain on her she does the same to her dad you know when they're on the phone she will she will ask these questions she will ask these questions and sometimes you listen to her and you're like it's as though somebody whispered these things to her but no it's literally she's intelligent shows and she 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 kind of sees what's going on she's she's questioning a lot um yeah uh shoo okay i didn't plan to cry the next question was how do you how do you relate with your previous in-laws do you do things just end with them as well or continue 
yeah i had like trouble still have trouble with that um i mean the logical thing is to let go <laughs> but i have built such a, a beautiful relationship with i yeah i have built a beautiful relationship with the the mother of my ex-husband and um it was hard like she used to be my prayer partner we used to pray together a lot we used to do do things a lot together we used to share a lot and i made a conscious decision to step back a little because i know how it feels to be the new girl while the family is still holding on to the old girl so i i didn't want that it's 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 also very heartbreaking i actually sent her a message today and i'm like this whole thing is also so messed up because sometimes i want to laugh and tell her stuff but i i can't because i need to hold back i need to um give them space to heal because this is a new thing if i'm still lingering there it will hinder like if my ex-husband wants to get married to someone else one day soon or whatever i can't still be at the top of their their tongue you know um but i'm not in any way rude uh, they are not rude towards me um yeah we're really just okay we're good we're good and i don't believe in why we're not fighting <laughs> we're not fighting like the problem is between me and their son not them and also i need to keep a cordial and a good relationship with my my former mother-in-law because of of her grandkids you know so yeah um if you're co-parenting this is the second the other question i think it's the second last question if you're co-parenting how was the journey and how is it now what's co-parenting does it eat every day does it drink water does it bark does it meow <laughs> um i don't have an answer for that for now i just want you to know that it's hard mm. it's hard um what were the red no oh so that was the last one yeah that was the last question um the other question that was asked was um why do i use my 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 name my surname i've gotten that a lot guys i didn't just wake up and change my surname to somebody else's surname my maiden surname to somebody else's surname and i don't think like it's fair to be asked that question like i am able to dot all my i's and cross all my t's all at once guys i'm trying wherever i can my surname is changed and i mean i have been asked to change it i i am okay guys like some questions and i'm not trying to be mean or anything i i just feel like it took me three years to sign no it took me two years to sign my surname over but you guys are expecting me to change my surname within months change back my surname within months it's weird and there's no like psychological process to it like wherever i i realize that my surname is whatever i change it like a friend of mine asked me when we had the prophetic worship night and i had my name as diseto silique why i put silique there and why and sh do i do i need do i need to identify as a silique still and i'm like a lot of people knew me as diseto silique and for the poster purposes i had to put my surname as diseto silique but we'll 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 get there guys we'll get there gradually and we are getting there we are there you know yeah so that's all the q a's out of the way i will be uh continuing with my journals so in the next videos the next video i'm gonna be answering the whole how did i get from he's the one to i'm not the bride <laughs> yeah so yeah and i'm gonna be sharing in this book this book guys 
this book has a lot and i'm going to be sharing a lot of my di diary entries and yeah thank you so much guys for tuning in for staying this long um if you're following me on instagram you know that we are cooking something exciting i said this last time i said it's a healing guide but when i was thinking about it i'm like it's not a journal it's not uh, a guide it literally is a letter to god from your heart and him breathing back into your broken wounds and saying this is how i want to heal you and this is the journey that i want you to take and this is how i'm going to love on you and this is how i'm going to restore you so i'm excited about this this letter that's in a book <laughs> yeah so if you want to know more about that uh do follow me on instagram i'm taking people with me i'm taking you guys with me on this journey on uh, literally from choosing the cover choosing the colors and yeah i want you guys to journey with me so that when you receive it in your hands it it bears more weight than just a book you pick up from a shelf yeah my name is tisa and thank you so much for tuning in and sticking by this far